Hi guys and welcome. So in this video we're going to be going through the respray on this Mini. We're going to be trying out for this the standard W400 from my water with the LV2 air cap in a 1.3 setup. Now this is a gun that I have bought purely because a lot of people have been asking what this is like compared to my Bel Area. So we've got hold of one of these just so we can do a little review and compare it um, and I can give you my thoughts on what I think of this compared to my Bel Area model, which is the limited edition model. It's got a slightly different air cap, um, but it's basically the exact same gun body and everything. It's got a different cap, um, and mine's also in a 1.3, so it's ideal to give a bit of a comparison on. Now, since making this video, um, those of you that follow us on Instagram will know that we actually ran um, a little giveaway on this spray gun. So uh, Mark Emmett has actually won this spray gun. Um, and that will be sent out to him this week. Um, if you don't follow us on Instagram, um, then please do. Because um, little bits and pieces like this. Um, we're going to have a few giveaways coming up. So if you don't follow us, click the link on our profile page on YouTube. Um, get on there, get following us for your chance to enter any little giveaways or anything like that that we have. And also you can get daily updates as and when I'm doing jobs and bits and pieces. So you'll actually see these jobs a bit ahead of time before I actually get round to editing them up and putting them on YouTube. So getting back to the job in hand, the respray on this Mini, it's going to be nothing special, it's basically just a bit of a tidy up for the customer, a um, bit of a budget respray if you want, um, it's direct gloss, we're going to be putting down two nice wet coats of this, and um, the direct gloss that we're using, um, mix ratio wise, is a 2 to 1, and I've put it at 5% thinners, um, just to help it flow that little bit better. Um, and obviously, the purpose of this really, um, this video, is just to give a bit of an idea of what this W400 is like compared to the Bel Area model. Now, as I was painting this, I found that I started off with the same settings as my Bel Area, just to give myself a bit of a gauge to see how this gun felt. Obviously, weight-wise, balance-wise and everything, it feels exactly the same as mine. However, I did find that it didn't atomize quite as fine. Now that's not to say that this is a bad spray gun whatsoever. It absolutely, for the money, I think these retail at around between about 180 and 200 pounds uh, UK. Um, they're a cracking spray gun. Um, and like I say, I've got the Bel Area one. I've had that now, probably coming on towards 12 months, and I absolutely love it. Um, it's one of my favorite spray guns. And you can put anything through these, you can use water, you can use, you can put wet on wet down with them. If you really wanted to dirty it up, you can put primer through them, but it's not something that I've ever done. Um, you can use direct gloss, uh, solvent base coat, lacquer, you know, HS and MS. They are a cracking little spray gun for the money. And as you can see, it really does put it down really nice on this Mini. Um, there's no really going slow with it. Um, no rushing round, and that little break there guys, that's just where I cut out the roof section to, just to stop the video getting a bit too long, so just ignore that bit. Um, so the spray gun itself, I started off at sort of like my average settings really, that I use my Bel Area at, which would be two and a half turns out on the fluid, and I'd say two bar on the pressure and full fan. Um, in a minute when I get round to the other wing, I did actually wind it up to three and a half, just because I wanted it going on that little bit wetter. Um, just to get a little bit of a smoother finish off the gun. Not because at two and a half I didn't think it was putting down well enough, but just because I thought this actual paint that we were using, um, which was a new direct gloss that we were just trying out actually, um, and I don't know the name of this yet I'm afraid, so when I do I'll add it in the description. But it really did, it sticks a lot better than the direct gloss that we were using. Um, and what I mean by that is, you could really hammer it on the side of the car, or really hammer it on a panel, and there was not much chance of it running. It seemed to have quite a nice sort of flow out time on it. And um, by the time it had flowed out, it had gone dry enough that it wasn't going to run. Whereas the other direct gloss that we've been using, um, we tend to find that it flow out 
and you had a very fine line between flowing out nice and running off the side. There you could just see me there, just adding that extra turn on that cap. And it made the world a difference, just to give it that extra turn on the fluid. Um, it meant that I could stay at a nice steady pace, because um, at the end of the day I don't need to rush a job like this, it's only a mini. Um, you know, I don't need to be running around, you know, it's not a big car that we're lacquering or anything like that, so I don't need to be going too fast. Um, but as you can see there by that wing, it really was putting it down really nice and wet. And really nice finish for what is, I'd say, price-wise, one of the lower priced of the sort of mid-range price spray guns. You know, for 200 quid, you can chuck anything through one of these things and it'll spray all day long. Um, I, you know, personally can't knock one of these. Um, the only reason I gave this away is because I've already got a Bel Area, I've got my Pro Light, I've got my FLGs and everything else. I just didn't really need another spray gun. So I thought rather than having another spray gun on the wall that I probably wouldn't use as much, um, just because I've got a spray gun set up in each setup that I need it for, that would give it away. And it'd be a nice little touch for you guys that um, viewers on YouTube and also for you guys that follow us on Instagram. So as far as this respray goes, what I started off by doing was doing the inside of the door shuts um, with two coats and making sure they were fully coloured up first. Then I've shut the doors and gone around the whole outside of the shell with a full wet coat. Then what we're going to do on the next coat in a minute is we're going to go around the whole of the shell and each time we get to the door shut we're going to give them a wet coat so that when we get to that stage giving them the wet coat will make sure that the inside and the outside has all been flowed nicely together and we're going to get no dry spots or dry edges on the inside of the door shuts or anything like that so it'll just give us a nice clean finish when we're done now if this was a higher end paint job and say we're using base coat and lacquer or even if it was a higher end paint job and they wanted to use direct gloss but you know they wanted it really really nice then we could say right well we'll take the doors and everything off but for the budget the customer had and um, they just wanted a nice tidy up on the mini and um, get it not looking nice and clean and fresh again there weren't many repairs but the paintwork just looked a little bit old and tired um, so a little respray like this is ideal just to make their car look that little bit nicer for them. So coat number two we're going to put on and we're going to keep the settings the same because I have to say once I'd got into the groove with this at three and a half turns out um, it did put the paint down really nice and I think that's the only real difference really. I look at the air caps and the holes in the air caps were slightly different sizes to what they were in the Bel area which obviously gives you a slightly different um, airflow and atomization on your paint. Now I found that if you wound it up to three and a half rather than the two and a half that I use my Bel area on then it put it down pretty much the same. The fan's not quite as wide, um, but to be fair, if you picked up this spray gun and you'd not use the Bel area, then it wouldn't bother you anyway, um, because it has got a big fan on it um, for a little 1.3. And at three and a half turns out, it does pump it on. Uh, I had no problems with putting it down wet, no problems keeping a dry edge all the way across. Got a good flow of paint, real nice finish once it had um, add you know a few minutes just to flow out in our booth and then you know going around the car couldn't knock it at all I'd say they're only the real main differences that I could find with this spray gun compared to the Bel Area was slightly finer atomization which on the Bel Area makes it that little bit easier to get that glassy finish if that's what you're chasing um, and slightly less of flow of paint um, and a touch of a smaller fan by that basically they're identical guns um, and to be honest if you bought one of these I can't see why you know if I'd have bought one of these before the Bel area um, then it wouldn't have bothered me whatsoever the Bel area is pretty renowned to be fair for being a real wet applicator um, so you do have to be careful with it sometimes but this standard W400, can't knock it whatsoever, great little spray gun and I hope Mark that's going to be getting it soon um, is just as happy with it, um, I couldn't fault it, it's a lovely little gun and at the end of it I even tried a bit of fade out thinners in it 
and it atomised that up really nice and as you can see by that quarter there it really does pump it on nice and wet so I'll go back to a bit about the paint job now so we've done that, we've come around the back end, we've done the quarter panel so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flick around these door shuts to keep that wet edge moving along the car and to make sure that we don't get any dry edges inside these doors now I have cut out the footage for the bonnet and the boot and I've cut out the footage for the roof otherwise it would have ended up about a 35 40 minute video and I didn't want this being too long for you guys one because it's a bit of a review on the Iwata and it'd probably be one of the longest spray gun reviews I've done if I left it at, well it would be the longest one if I left it that long um, but even so it's still you know quite a long review video but also it gives you a good nice look at this mini as well which I have to say look really nice when it's finished so as you can see there what I've done now is I've just shut that door so all that paint on the inside of the door shuts is still wet we can flick over the outside of this now and it's going to give us a real nice clean look when we finish this paint job um, little minis like this I've done everything from high end restorations on these right down to sort of the more budget respray with a direct gloss like this is um, and they're always nice to do this one was a bit of a pain because the whole car was the same colour so I had to try and get down the sides, around the front, across the roof and the problem was it was a bit of a cold damp day so I had the heater on in the booth so it was flashing off a bit fast so at the end of this um, they're actually showing a bit of footage of me using a bit of fade out thinner over the dry edges because when I finish this wing gear I go across the scuttle a tiny bit and I'll go across the bottom bumper bar a tiny bit and then I'll do half the roof run around do the other half the roof and then carry on the other side of the wing now what's that what's going to leave us is just there where I've stopped we're going to get a bit of a dry edge when we come back round because that will have flashed off that tiny little bit and we'll get the same on the middle of the skull now all that's going to take at the end of this paint job is to just give the gun a very quick rinse out you don't have to get it immaculately clean because obviously you're putting this colour on top of this colour and I just put a touch of fade out thinners in the spray gun and what I like to do is wind the needle in a bit and just turn the pressure up so you've got a real nice fine mist dust a bit of fade out thinners in and as you'll see at the end we can get rid of them little dry edges where we're finished from doing half the roof with no problem whatsoever we're not going to be fighting against them dry edges or having to really buff and buff and buff to get rid of those they'll be gone done and dusted so this section in the middle here is exactly where we'd be applying it and the same on the front I'm just going to come down the edge of this wing gear and then we're going to stop on the edge of this little bar where the bonnet catches and we'll end up with a touch of a dry spot there and we'll end up with a touch of a dry edge there as well where we've just stopped so that little bit of fade out thinner will just help make that look better and that fade out thinner will just help melt those two little bits back together and basically eliminate the need to buff that dry edge out of it um, just tidy it up that little bit and for the extra few seconds few minutes it takes it's really worth it it ends up with a much nicer cleaner job at the end of it so we're coming on the last section now on this side and I hope this video will give you a bit of an insight into what the standard W400 from Iwata sprays like so things to remember this is the 1.3 setup with the LV2 air cap um, and we're using a direct gloss at 2 to 1 at 5% thinners um, and I have to say I couldn't really fault it um, it gave a nice finish real nice clean look to this job at the end of it it needed minimal flat and polishing um, mostly just to nib a few little tiny bits of dust out of it at the end so overall I was more than happy with how this spray gun went and as I say if I'd have bought this before I bought the Bel Area then I would have one of these on my shelf instead of the Bel Area I'm not quite sure off the top of my head what the price difference is between the two but for the money that this spray gun is it's worth it all day long so I hope you guys have enjoyed hearing my thoughts on this compared to my Bel Area model and if you've got the standard W400, which I know a few of you viewers and followers have, then please do leave a few comments in the box below 
just to let viewers know your thoughts on it as well and not just mine. Um, you know, the more the more comments we get and the more um, sort of insight and the more knowledge we can put on, um, it's the better for all the viewers. Um, and even for me, you know, I've I quite often read through the comments of what you guys put. You know, and even I take the comments to note. You know, if someone comes on and says, "Oh well, no," you know, I think you should run it at this pressure or try it with this air cap, etc. You know, I have bought air caps off your recommendations and given them a try. You know, at the end of the day, we're all still learning. Every day is a school day, and if you're not learning, I don't understand where the fun is in it. Um, in my opinion, it's like using all these new spray guns and all these new materials and all these new bits and pieces. It's great, I love it. Um, you know, it, obviously it puts new content on the channel, but at the same time, it gives new things to try. Um, and don't just stick to, you know, your everyday stuff. You know, there's all these manufacturers out there that make different products, different tooling, etc. You might be using one, you might pick up another, and you might absolutely love it. You never know unless you try. So, you know, stay sharp, make sure, same as I do, do plenty of research, you know, look at what you're using, how you're using it, you know, see if there's a better way of using it, you know, you could always find out something new and something different. And for me, that is one thing that I love about this trade, there's so many different makes, so many different models of spray guns, of products and materials, there's always something new you can try, and it might make your job that little bit easier, it might not. Um, but it's always worth giving it a go. Um, there's plenty of stuff, so why not take the plunge? Just try. Get a small sample pot from your local supplier or from your online supplier. Give them a ring, try a little sample. You may find you love it, you may find you hate it, but you're never going to know if you try. So, this is the last bit now on this respray. So, what I'm going to do now is just show you my little bit of a fade out trick where we've just had them tiny bits of a dry edge. So what we're going to do is we're just going to dump the last bit of excess paint out of the pot and then quickly whip into the mixing room, tiny bit of gun wash and just give this a really quick rinse through. As I said, with something like direct gloss or with lacquer, you don't need to fully clean all this out of the spray gun. Um, you don't, you know, you don't need it immaculately clean. You don't need to sit there for ten minutes making sure all that comes out of your spray gun. I mean, the ideal thing is to have, say, a touch-up spray gun with a bit of fade-out thinner in it, ready, so you could just blow it over. But on a job like this, um, I'm just going to give it a quick rinse out, pot, quick wipe out, and you can see there, there's a touch of paint left in the bottom of the gun, but it's nothing to worry about because you're putting that bit of colour down on top of the colour. So you're not going to get any problems with it, you're not going to get any differentiation in your colour or anything like that. So it's not something you need to worry about. So all I've done there, just quick shake up on that. Quick bit of um, the fade out thinner in the gun. Now I'm going to just quickly adjust my gun. So obviously we're not at three and a half turns out because we don't want to pump this stuff on. If you pump this stuff on it's just going to absolutely melt the paint straight off the car. So as you can see, we've got nice fine mist, nice high pressure, nice and far away. Just dust that over there and that will just melt that little dry edge out and just flow that back into the paint job so it'll end up nice and give that nice little bit of a clean look to it. So that's just a little tip for the end of the video for anyone who's ever struggled getting a dry edge. And you can do this in direct gloss or with lacquer, um, it makes no difference. Just be careful of how much you put down. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Um, we've had a lot of new subscribers recently, which is brilliant. Um, if you like the videos, feel free to give them a like. Um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Um, we've got plenty of new videos coming up. Um, if you look through, there's plenty of hints and tips. We've just put some videos up on the Lumalite um, and on the custom candy videos. So if you've got any questions, as always, drop them in the comments box below and I'll see you again soon, guys.